The coronavirus has affected us all in some ways. Washing our hands, donning face masks, social distancing, and yes, even hoarding toilet paper have all become new norms in an otherwise upside down world. But what is it about the coronavirus that has caused such panic and harm to our society? Well, in order to answer that question, we need some science. Let's start by understanding what exactly the coronavirus is. A virus at its most basic level is genetic material wrapped within a protective layer called a capsid that is able to infect other living organisms. Viruses themselves aren't classified as being alive since they rely on other living things to reproduce and survive. But the coronavirus is much more complex than this. In fact, the coronavirus has the largest viral genome, measuring in 30,000 nucleotides in length. This leads us to the coronavirus's first advantage, which is its survival rate. Longer genomes allow for greater possibilities of mutation and higher rates of natural recombination with other viral strains. This provides the coronavirus with the advantage to overcome deleterious mutations in the population and move to other species. Another unique aspect of the coronavirus is its spike proteins, which are like crowns lined along the virus's capsid. These proteins are able to bind to ACE2 receptors on human lung cells that enter through receptor-mediated endocytosis. The viruses inject their genetic material and create a viral factory that produces more coronaviruses inside the human body. The effects of this process are disastrous, causing abrasions and scars in the lungs known as fibrosis that make it harder to breathe, which can leave the alveoli of the lungs more susceptible to bacterial infections like pneumonia. If that wasn't dangerous enough, the coronavirus can also turn your own immune cells against you, using your body's killer T cells and neutrophils to kill healthy cells instead of infected ones. These cells release cytotoxic granules that contain granzymes and poriforin to induce programmed cell death. Now the coronavirus is much more than its corona. The nucleocapsid protein encloses or encapsulates RNA for incorporation into budding virions. The membrane glycoprotein drives the assembly of the coronavirus. Envelope proteins act as viral porins, and some coronavirus viruses also encode a hemagglutinin esterase protein, which helps in the attachment and destruction of certain sialic receptors that are found on the host cell surface. The only thing left missing from our coronavirus diagram is our spike proteins and our lipid bilayer, with the latter being made of hydrophilic, water-loving phosphorus heads and hydrophobic, water-hating fatty acid tails. Despite their complexity and range of function, the structural proteins of the coronavirus is only encoded by a third of its genome. Now knowing more about the coronavirus and what makes it so dangerous, we can understand why the precautions that we take really matter. Washing your hands is important because soap contains fat-like substances known as amphiphiles that are structurally similar to the lipids in the virus's membrane. The tail of the soap is drawn to the fatty outer layer of the virus and pries it open, which disrupts the chemical bonds that allow viruses to stick to our hands. When you cough or sneeze, tiny droplets from our airways can fly up to 30 feet. So by covering our mouths, we prevent inhaling the virus. Social distancing and quarantine plays a role in preventing the virus from jumping between populations and possibly mutating with each replication. But the toilet paper, that doesn't do much. The next time you're wondering why we take the steps that we do to protect ourselves and our communities, always remember that there's some science behind it.